This is Adam Grumbo, and welcome to this week's podcast. Sponsored by 405th.com, where Spartans are made. All right, well, uh, welcome to Adam's podcast week two. And uh, this week you're going to find out that I am a horrible liar because, as you can see, the garage is nowhere near clean. Actually, it's dirtier than it was last time. So, uh, And with the whole sponsored by the 405th Infantry Division, that's all bogus because uh, I don't make any money. Running the thing just kind of means um, I'm pretending to have a sponsor. You know how the deal is. So, uh, over the weekend, I noticed at least one, maybe two Mountain Dews were missing out of the fridge. And there's only one person I can possibly bl blame for this uh, tragedy. And of course, that is the TK. That's right, my friends. The Stormtrooper is fired! He did not do his job of protecting my crap while I was at work. So he has been stripped of his armor completely. And as you can see, it's pretty embarrassing for him. He hangs his head low. I also picked up another mannequin to help with the security duties uh, and the security detail around here. And so far, he is holding on to mostly unfinished Mark VI armor. Hopefully, he does a better job than the TK. I mean, seriously, if you remember back to my Spike TV interview, I specifically said the TK armor is not as manly as the Master Chief, and now you see why. Anyway, to the subject of this week's podcast, we are going to be casting out one of our one of our assault rifles. Straight up plastic, made of smooth cast 320. So, uh, what's the mold we're going to be using to make these babies? Well, we're going to be using a two-part um, silicone mold. It's backed with a shell shock shell, and it tends to be a little bit heavy. So, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting it down. I'm going to cast out each side individually, then I'm going to put the two together and I'm going to seal them up. It's the easiest way after all the assault rifles that I've made to cast these puppies out. So uh, here we go. Okay guys, first things first, make sure you have, uh, you, you gotta be wise and wear some gloves. Wear some, wear some pants that you're, uh, you're never going to ever want to use outside of the garage. So uh, what we're going to do is just make sure that your mold is completely registered into your mother mold. If it's not pushed all the way down, your completed cast is going to be all warped. It's going to have little indents in it that you don't want. So make sure every part is completely registered into the mother mold. Let's go ahead and start pouring our plastics. Yellow and blue, part A, part B. So I'm going to use the red cup for the part A, the yellow one. Blue cup, part B, blue. Mix it into your third cup. I'm also using a little bit of tint. That's what gives these castings the gray color at the end. Just a drop or two. I mean, it's, it's pretty potent stuff, so just a little tiny drop and then uh, mix it up together. The first batch into the mold is always going to take the longest to cure because the mold's probably pretty cold. So you can say that it makes it a while, you'll be fine. Pick up the first half of your assault rifle mold and go ahead and pour your smooth cast concoction all over the mold. All right, now, now as you slosh this stuff around, uh, you have to be careful that the liquid resin does not go over the sides of the mold because you could get it on your skin. You just, don't, you just don't want that to happen because if it does get on your skin, I mean, it's not going to be pretty like, oh, oh my god! You know, it's not going to be like that, but uh, <laughs> it's going to be a little bit warm. You know, some people might actually develop a little bit of a rash because of it, so be really careful about getting it on your skin and on your clothes. You just don't want it to happen. Uh, for me, it really doesn't do anything. I just peel it off after it dries, but everybody's a little bit different, and you better you better safe than sorry, so just be careful when you're slushing this stuff around. I don't want any phone calls from any angry moms blaming me for their kid getting his arm amputated. 
So what I'm doing is uh, I'm trimming off, I'm just peeling off some of the excess stuff around the edges. It's going to make the two halves of the mold fit together more snugly, more flush, so I don't have any leaking plastic coming out of the edges. If you've got leaking plastic, you've got yourself a big problem. First of all, you're going to waste about 20 bucks worth of plastic all over the floor or all over your foot. And once it gets on your foot and your skin starts peeling off, there's a lot of blood to clean up. It's just a huge pain in the butt. So save yourself a little bit of time, money, and pain by peeling some off the edges so it doesn't leak out. Okay, this is the second half. After you've pushed in all the parts, make sure it's completely embedded into the mother shell mold. You can go ahead and pour another batch into here. If you're looking at electronics kit, um, you can pick those up from Replicant Effects. Uh, I have his information in the info on the right side there. Just check it out. He's got some great stuff. It makes the assault rifles really freaking awesome. Okay, now that we have both of our halves um, plasticed up, we're going to have to combine the two. And so, we'll take both halves. Stack them one on top of the other. And strap these babies together as tight as we possibly can. We're talking silk scarves to the bedpost tight. I mean tight. Because if it's loose, you're going to have plastic leaking out all over the place. We don't want that. Uh, and keep it tight enough so nothing leak leaks out under my foot. Not that that's ever happened before. Uh, it's not like I've ever poured plastic on my foot and lost all the hair on my toes pulling it off, but you know, I'm just looking out for you guys. So now I've got the spout up here where I can uh, pour some more resin into. But uh, this is the tough part because when you got little swizzle sticks for arms, you can't lift this thing, it's like 40 pounds. All right, uh, mix yourself up another batch, batch of plastic and uh, pour it into this top hole. Make sure it goes all over your legs and drips down to your feet. And so we're just gonna rock it back and forth on my knee here. Take the uh, take the weight off of my little noodle arms. Oh, and that's fantastic news. This was a brand new shirt and I just got plastic on it. Woohoo! Okay, after you've poured enough plastic to fill the seam around the assault rifle, you're gonna have to wait at least a half an hour, maybe an hour, for the plastic to completely cool. Because if you try to take it out of the mold before it cools, it's gonna sag in the middle and you're gonna just have wasted about an hour of your time. Um, well, while we're on that subject, a lot of people are probably going to ask me, can I has a assault rifle for $20? And the answer to that is going to be no. The materials to make one of these, one of these raw castings is about $50 worth of plastic and about an hour's worth of time. And that doesn't include what it costs to make the original assault rifle from which the mold was made. The original assault rifle actually um, it cost about $1,500 to create from a CNC machine. The mold cost about $700 worth to make. Now you know. Alright, it's been about an hour, so let's go ahead and remove the clips. Moment of truth, boys and girls. Check it out, not bad. But check it out. Assault rifle, nice and light, nice and solid. Ready for a flashlight and a barrel and a nice paint job. So, thanks for tuning in this week's podcast. I hope you learned something about how I make these assault rifles. And uh, we'll uh, catch you next week. See you then, guys.